9. Parasitic Eye Worm In early 2023, a nauseating video of a man pulling a parasitic worm out of his eye went viral. Dr. Srikanth Shetty, who treated the patient in India, identified the species as Wuchereria bancrofti, which affects an estimated 120 million people throughout Central Africa, South and Central America, and Asia. It's one of three species of parasitic worm that cause a condition called lymphatic filariasis. The infection is rarely found in a person's eye and typically affects the lymph system. It spreads through repeated mosquito bites over time, which means that tourists and short-term visitors to tropical and subtropical regions are at a low risk for contracting it. After entering the body, the worms reproduce causing millions of microscopic larvae to enter the bloodstream. And while the parasite causes long-term damage to the lymph system, many people experience no symptoms. The infection can cause a person to hold fluid and develop swelling called lymphedema, as well as hardened skin or elephantiasis. In many cases, these symptoms take years to set in. According to the CDC, infections can be treated with a yearly dose of medication, which kills larvae. The treatment prevents a person from being able to pass the infection on to someone else, but does not kill the adult worms living in someone's body, and isn't a guaranteed cure for the condition, even after the adult worms in someone's system finally die off after living out their five to seven year lifespan. Patients can be left with lasting symptoms. Eight. Nathostomiasis. A few weeks after returning home to Australia from a family vacation to Thailand in 2015, 20-year-old Tess Swift began to feel sick to her stomach. Her condition worsened to the point where she was rushed to the emergency room. But doctors misdiagnosed her with irritable bowel syndrome and little progress was made when it came to alleviating her symptoms. She became increasingly sick over the next seven years as she tried desperately to find answers and ended up on a feeding tube as she combated chronic pain and nausea. Swift also dropped out of nursing school because her suffering became too intense for her to focus on her studies. In 2019, she underwent an extensive battery of tests to get to the bottom of her mystery illness, but the COVID-19 pandemic delayed the delivery of the results. Finally, in 2022, Swift learned that she was suffering from a potentially fatal parasitic disease called nathostomiasis. She underwent treatment to kill the parasite, but still suffered from the long-term effects of the infection, including internal damage, and has continued to use a feeding tube. Swift also struggles with depression and post-traumatic stress disorder brought on by the seven-year ordeal. Due to the damage caused to both her mind and body, she can only work part-time and has been unable to fully pursue a career. The parasitic worms that cause nathostomiasis are mostly found in tropical and subtropical regions. They're especially prevalent in Southeast Asia, particularly Thailand. According to the CDC, most people contract the parasite by eating raw and uncooked freshwater fish reptiles, birds, and other animals. Infections are uncommon in most Western countries, but are treatable when detected. Unfortunately, in Swift's case, it took so long to figure out what was wrong that the damage to her insides may be irreparable. 7. Brain-Eating Amoeba A 59-year-old North Carolina man named Eddie Gray died in 2019 after visiting a water park in Cumberland County where he unknowingly ingested a freshwater parasite called Negleria fowleri. Better known as the brain-eating amoeba, it causes a sudden, severe, and typically deadly brain infection after entering a swimmer's body through their nose. Of the 145 recorded infections in the United States between 1962 and 2018, all but four were fatal. Negleria fowleri itself is not exactly rare, but infections are. It won't infect a person who swallows infested water and only enters the body when someone gets water up their nose. From there, it makes its way to the brain and starts eating away at the tissue. Symptoms include headache, nausea, and vomiting, and worsen rapidly once they set in, killing most sufferers within a week or two. There's no way to eliminate the parasite from infested waters, 
so there are limited ways to prevent an infection. Health officials recommend avoiding freshwater bodies in hot weather, and when water levels are low, using a nose plug and avoiding stirring up sediment in shallow water. But no amount of caution can guarantee that an infection will be avoided, which means to go swimming at your own risk. Brain-eating amoeba infections in the U.S. seem to be on the rise, according to experts. And while most cases occur in Florida and Texas, the microbe has started to wreak havoc in other states. In 2022, a child died from an infection in Nebraska, marking the first case of its kind in the state and the second to occur in the Midwest that summer. 6. Rat Lungworm 64-year-old Ben Manila and his wife, 57-year-old Eliza Lape, traveled from San Francisco to Hawaii for their honeymoon in 2017 and contracted a parasite called rat lungworm. Eliza was the first to experience symptoms before the couple left Hawaii, and Ben's symptoms began shortly after they returned home. Speaking with local station KHNL, Eliza described her worsening symptoms as feeling like somebody was taking a hot knife and just stabbing me in different parts of my body. Meanwhile, Ben's condition also continued to deteriorate, and he ended up in the hospital. The couple weren't sure how they contracted the parasite, which typically spreads to humans through the consumption of raw or undercooked infected snails and slugs. Some people experience few symptoms, while others become dangerously ill. And in some cases, rat lungworm has proven to be fatal. Eliza and Ben's cases were among nine confirmed cases of rat lungworm in Hawaii that year, eight of which required hospitalization. Thankfully, there were no fatalities. The parasite is endemic in the state, but is rare in the mainland US, where concerns of its spread have grown in recent years. Have you ever had a parasitic infection? Tell me about it in the comments below. But first, be sure to subscribe. 5. Crusted Scabies The term crusted scabies is cringeworthy enough on its own. But the actual infection is nothing short of horrifying. It's an extreme version of typical scabies and starts in the same way. When the microscopic human itch mite burrows its way under a person's upper layer of skin, where it proceeds to live and multiply. Scabies exists all over the world and does not discriminate between social classes. But people with weakened immune systems are particularly vulnerable. And the parasite is especially pervasive in crowded places with a lot of close contact, making places like prisons and nursing homes the perfect breeding ground for scabies. In 2015, a woman named Rebecca Zenny died at age 93 at a nursing home in Lafayette, Georgia. A lawsuit filed by her family after her death claimed she had been living there for five years and had developed a case of crusted scabies that was so severe, one of her hands turned black and her fingers nearly fell off. The infection eventually caused deadly bacteria to enter Zenny's bloodstream. Scabies is treatable with the use of prescription medications. Left untreated, a crusted scabies infection will only get worse and more contagious. And that's exactly what happened in Zenny's case, according to Mike Prieto, the lawyer who represented her family in the lawsuit. He accused the nursing home, which had a history of violations, of neglecting Zenny when she was in desperate need of treatment causing her to spend the last six months of her life in excruciating pain. Prieto blamed the for-profit nursing home structure. More specifically, the tendency of these facilities to understaff in order to maximize the amount of money they make for Zenny's death. 4. Cyclospora chiatinensis In July of 2018, McDonald's temporarily pulled its salads from the menu at 3,000 of its restaurants across the United States after customers in Illinois and Iowa contracted a parasite called Cyclospora chiatinensis. The microscopic organism contaminates food and water through feces and causes a non-fatal but highly unpleasant illness called cyclosporiasis. Diarrhea, bloating, cramping, nausea, and low-grade fever are the most common symptoms, with more severe cases accompanied by vomiting, muscle aches, weight loss, and really bad diarrhea. 
Symptoms typically appear around a week after being exposed. Cyclospora chiatinensis is endemic in tropical and subtropical climates, but it was practically unheard of in most developed countries until the 1980s and 90s, when contaminated produce led to several outbreaks. It's also sometimes responsible for a condition commonly known as traveler's diarrhea, which results from the increased exposure to the parasite that often comes with traveling. The good news is that the condition usually doesn't require treatment and passes within three to four days, but it could last a month or longer, depending on the individual's immune system, and sometimes the symptoms subside, making it seem like the sufferer is cured, only to return with a vengeance. Around 550 people got sick in the 2018 McDonald's outbreak, which came on the heels of a large-scale recall of infected Del Monte produce that affected people in four U.S. states. These foodborne outbreaks aren't entirely uncommon, and while health officials say that thoroughly washing produce can greatly reduce the risks, doing so won't entirely eliminate the parasite from an infected product. 3. Swimmer's Itch in 2019, a lifeguard for the city of Los Angeles named Jasper Kim filed a grievance claiming that he and at least 20 other lifeguards developed respiratory and skin conditions after being required to swim in a parasite-infested lake. According to the complaint, Kim warned his superiors several times that the man-made Hanson Dam Recreation Lake hadn't been tested for parasites but the lifeguards were nevertheless ordered to complete their swimming exam in the lake. 22 people came down with swimmer's itch, a rash caused by an allergic reaction to parasites that are released into the water by infected snails. According to the CDC, the parasite prefers to infect certain birds and mammals, including raccoons, muskrats, ducks, and geese. But it doesn't discriminate against humans when the opportunity to infect one arises. These microscopic creatures burrow their way under a swimmer's skin, causing itching, burning, and blisters. Medical treatment isn't always necessary. Because the parasites can't survive in humans, they die shortly after infecting a person. Kim claimed that he and others needed medical treatment, but weren't allowed to use their allotted sick days during their recovery. In the complaint, the lifeguards called on the Parks and Recreation Department to test all the city's bodies of water, to discipline the superiors who ordered the lifeguards to take the test, and to restore their lost benefits and wages. 2. Dirofilaria repens Commonly known as heartworm, the Dirofilaria repens is a long parasitic roundworm that typically infects carnivorous mammals including dogs, cats, wolves, coyotes, foxes, muskrats, and sea lions. It's spread by mosquitoes and occasionally finds its way into the human body. But in these cases, it does not survive past the larval stage. After traveling to a rural mosquito-riddled area outside Moscow, a 32-year-old woman noticed a migrating blemish that moved all over her face. It first appeared under her eye, then migrated to her lip and elsewhere. The symptoms were mild, consisting of occasional burning and itching. She had no clue that she was infected with heartworm until doctors discovered the condition. Vladimir Karteshev, who led the study on the woman's case, told the Washington Post that heartworm parasites are an emerging disease in Western Russia and its neighboring countries, with over 4,000 cases being reported between 1997 and 2018. The particular species that was observed in the Russian woman's case is not known to exist in the United States, where the only recorded heartworm presence is a species called D. tenuis. Doctors surgically removed the worm from her face, and she went on to fully recover. 1. Echinococcus granulosis Commonly known as the high-dated worm, hyper-tapeworm, or dog-tapeworm, Echinococcus granulosis typically infects the small intestines of canines, where it lays eggs that are deposited through the dog's feces. The egg-laden feces then gets consumed by an intermediary host, usually a livestock animal like a cow or a sheep. After hatching inside the intermediate host's body, the larvae travel through the animal's bloodstream and embed themselves in its organs. A dog or other primary host then eats the infected meat, 
starting the cycle all over again. In a rare instance of hydatid worms infecting humans, two hunters in New Hampshire contracted the parasite in late 2022 after butchering a moose with their dogs nearby. The dogs most likely consumed infected moose meat and either licked themselves, then licked their humans, or otherwise somehow exposed the hunters to the tapeworm's eggs. Humans can suffer from two different types of hydatid disease. Cystic echinocosis, or CE, is often asymptomatic and therefore goes unnoticed but the tiny worms can cause serious long-term damage in the form of cysts that develop on the organs. Alveolar echinococcus, or AE, is rare in humans but is much more dangerous than CE and can even be fatal. Hydatid worms were first discovered in Alaska, but are found all over the world and are especially prevalent in communities that practice sheep farming. The incident involving the two hunters in New Hampshire came amid warnings from the state's Health and Human Services Department about a tapeworm outbreak that had been infecting the moose population for several years. The agency recommended not letting dogs eat raw meat, keeping up to date on dogs' preventative worm treatment, and practicing thorough hand washing. Thanks for watching. Would you rather spend the first three days of your dream vacation with a highly unpleasant, but relatively harmless stomach ailment, or catch a case of extremely irritating poison ivy toward the end of the trip. Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe. See you soon, bye.